So thanks. So who who was behind like I don't even this uh, I, it says Pastor Jeremiah and I'm not entirely sure who that is, but uh, yeah. who, who was behind all this? Who should we be well, thanking? It was Sheila's idea technically. Oh. She doesn't even remember. So, she doesn't even remember. Okay. So, so you said October is Pastor so stay Appreciation tuned. Month? We are going to get into the I didn't Word even of God. Know that. So I guess that's something you teach you in Bible college. Oh, missed, missed that class. So thank you. Thank you, Nicole, Roz, Sheila, whoever yeah. it is that had a hand in this, Amen. maybe other people had a hand Amen. Thank you. So amen. Yeah. All right, without any further delay, who's ready to hear the word of God? Let's welcome up Pastor Steve. All right, there is a, I don't know if it's there or not. Oh, it looks like a nice, a cold one for me. Yep. I did. Praise God. God's on the throne. Let's have some word of prayer. Very interesting the way things have gone so far. I'll tell you what, God's got a plan tonight. Divine synchronization, Holy Ghost. So, Father, we thank you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Not by might nor by power, but in the name of Jesus, that precious name that you've allowed us to come together and worship and exalt today. And we're going to continue to do that, Lord. We're not going to stop in Jesus' name. And we just praise you and thank you for the manifestation of the glory of God, for the manifestation of the sons of God, for the presence of the living God. We thank you, Lord, that you indwell us so that we might give you praise and honor and worship that's do your name. We thank you, Father, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This service is in your hands, every bit of it, from beginning to end. Thank you, Lord. Yes, thanks for that blessing, whoever was involved in that. Sure was in unexpected. But, uh, you know, interesting. What, tonight they say is Halloween night? I haven't even really thought about it. But uh, it's Halloween, and it's actually, to the devil worshipers, it is their number one main night of devil worship. A lot of groups, Kenny mentioned a little bit, they pray against the church. They pray that pastors will fall, that Christians will fall, that we'll fall uh, to the powers of hell. And, uh, you know, I thought about that today, and I wasn't obsessed with it. In fact, I hardly thought about Halloween, but I know what they're doing in their world. We've dealt with this before. There's a lot of witchcraft that happens. A lot of people have a lot of attacks. But, you know, God has a, a, an earthly and spiritual strategy. So when they gather together and they think they can overcome the coordination of the devil to be present in this place, he will bow. And it's interesting because that very first song they played, uh, it was uh, going up into the high places to tear down the kingdom of God. And I was thinking of that. And she also said in exhort, exhorting on that first song how thanksgiving is a big part of pulling down the powers of hell. And that's what I'm going to talk about. So I'm going to go into three scriptures and going to go into the plan that I believe God has for tonight. So the first one is in Romans chapter 1. You know, some people complain because we don't open the Bible enough. But I believe those are people that don't know the Word of God because if they listen closely, at least out of me I know, and I believe my other, but the Word of God's coming out of us. Because when you feed on the Word and eat the Word for almost 50 years, it's so filling it comes out of my mouth. I don't have to read it off a written page. Amen. In fact, that's actually getting religious. Some people say, unless you open the Bible, uh, you aren't talking about God. You need to listen to the Holy Ghost and the Word of God. Amen. I'm not perfect, but I know what's in me. I know about what I've been feeding on. I know what God gives the people. He gives living bread. Amen. So you don't always have to open a Bible. But for those of you that are doubters in what I just said, I'm going to help you out by reading a few scriptures, which is always good. But we read scriptures. I read scriptures every day. Amen. We've had Bible studies all the time. We teach people to get into the Word. You have to get in the Word. But uh, let's start out with Romans chapter 1. Praise God. Woo! Glory to God. It is a good night. It is God's night. Amen. All right, Romans chapter 1. Amen. So Paul, Paul writing here, and... Uh, I'm just going to read in a little bit of this into where we're going. And I'm going to start with verse 16. Paul said, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believes. 
to the Jew first and also to the Greek. For therein, or in that, in the gospel, is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. Because that which may be known of God is manifest or revealed in them, for God has showed it to them. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. In other words, there's no excuse that anybody should be an unbeliever. Even creation itself testifies the existence of God. It's only a proud, stubborn, egotistical spirit that will deny the reality of a living God that made all things. Because if you think hard enough about anything, it could be a leaf on a tree, it could be a person's eyeballs, it could be a, a body, uh, just how uh, everything operates. Uh, when a baby is born, the, the complexity of how it's put together and just manifests in the womb, it, it throws me on my face. It throws me on the floor to worship God. Because that's the only thing. It's the existence of God that he's involved in creation. Amen. So it says the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made. All right? So that uh, even his eternal power in God had so that they are without excuse. Because that, when they knew God, they glorified or honored him not as God, neither were thankful. Say, neither were thankful. Neither were thankful, neither were thankful but because became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. I believe thankfulness is one of the greatest keys that every Christian needs to get a hold of. And in order for God really to set you free, for the manifest presence of God to show up in your life, you have to work on becoming a thankful person. You may be bitter, you may be angry, you may have hostility in your heart, but if you can't shake that and let go of it, which you can do all things through Christ, right, who strengthens you. If you can't do that, I'm, I'm telling you right now, you're locked up, there's no release in your life, there's no joy in your life. My Bible says the joy of the Lord is your strength, and your joy no man takes from you, or woman or demon, amen. So that's the truth. So if joy is gone, if it's non-existent or very... Uh, not relative to your physical life as far as uh, manifesting that there's something wrong. And I can about guarantee you that a thankful heart a, or a bitter heart has a lot to do with people going around with a sour puss, a frown on their face, angry, always got something negative to say, mad at the world, mad at God, mad at every else. It's because there's bitterness and you maybe you never learned to be a thankful person. Amen. I think if we all thought about the negatives in our life, we could all be bitter and angry and mad. If you just thought about it, did you hear what Kenny said? Think about the good things. Think about the good things that happen. If, it do, if you do that, and a lot of people have a hard time just shaking the anger. They don't want to think about the nice things. But think about the good things God done. If God saved your scruffy tail, you ought to be thankful in Jesus' name. Like he said, I ain't going to hell. I'm going to heaven. I'm thankful that God purchased my salvation unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood. And he has made us kings and priests unto God our rest. So we need to become thankful. We need to focus on what God has done for us. Not what has happened to you. You've got to let things go in order for God to move through that to bring you to a place of release and peace in your mind. And you won't get peace in your mind, mind heart till you forgive others, till you put on Christ, do you let love run the show? Amen. Start loving people and let things go. And I'll tell you what, the more you do, it'll be like walking out of a prison door. And I'll tell you what, if you've been incarcerated, and I talk to people all the time, big time. When they walk out of that prison door, in fact, there's a brother here that spent 17 years. I talked to him Thursday night. I guarantee you, when you walk out of that door after prison, uh, 17 years, you're feeling good. Amen. And your name don't have to be James Brown. Amen. To have a good day, right? But you feel good, why? Right? Because you got released. And I'm telling you some folks, until we learn to become a thankful person, and in many cases it's learned, and some of us are just, it's natural, because we're so thankful that God's been so good. Personally, I just, I'm thanking God all the time. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I just, it just, it comes out of me. I'm not trying to do it, it just comes out of me. I'm a very thankful person. Every day I'm thanking God for how good he is, how great he is, how awesome he is, how, how magnificent he is, just everything. I'm just in continual thanksgiving. Now notice, it says these people here, listen, in Romans 1, it says, because 
the people that are denying the existence of God, when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful, but they became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. Their foolish heart was darkened because they were down in the mouth. Thanksgiving is not a part of their life. Always got something negative going through their mind. Can't say nothing good about nothing. I'll tell you what, there's no smiles, not a genuine smile, on none of them people's life. You might be able to work one up in a, in a, in a service or something, or when you're saying hi to something, but there's no, no peace in your heart. People can smile but not be real. But if it's real, it'll, just, it'll be natural. Thank you, Jesus. You'll have peace in your heart. You know everything's good. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. Every tongue shall rise against you in judgment. You shall condemn. That's the heritage of the servants of the Lord. And their righteousness is in me, saith the Lord. You talk about a blessing. God has given us his promises. All the promises of God in him are yes. And in him, amen, to the glory of God by us. So we have an opportunity to come out of the mully grubs. Let bitterness, anger, unforgiveness go and just do it by an act of your will. Even if you don't feel like it, forget how you feel. I don't feel like forgiving. Look, act by faith. Amen. It said the just shall live by faith. I just read that. Faith acts on the word whether you feel it or not. Faith says, I'm going to let that person go because I know I should even though I don't feel it. Lord, I choose to let that person go. Just work it. If it's coming out of your heart, you feel, oh man, that feels better. <laughs> Angry, bitter people never have a smile on their face. How are people going to see Jesus if we're going around angry and bitter and mad all the time? You know what you need to do? Get released. Do what we're talking about. Become thankful. Start thanking God for the air you breathe. I mean, you just think about the air you breathe. I think about it, it blows my mind. All the years I've been living. I mean, if it just changed, however it's put together, that air, how the composite of it is, none of us would be breathing. I mean, God could just change the whole structure of it and all of a sudden, we'd all be gone. God's a good God. He's letting the air continue to be how it needs to be so we can continue to be. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. With all the pollution, getting on freeways, with all them exhaust, and you're behind us belching out, and you're still breathing. I got up in the sunlight the other day, you know, I'm looking at the sunbeams come in the room. I see all these little dust things flying through this one of them in the sunbeam. <laughs> and I'm sitting there going, oh, man. <laughs> and that stuff's going in you all the time, whatever it is. Right. And we're still breathing. Are you serious? That's a miracle. We're talking about God. Only God could do that. You don't have a clue what you're breathing in, man. People work, I used to work in a body shop, man. They'd be grinding that Bondo and stuff, Bondo all over, man. Some people working there, breathing all, breathing all that stuff, pain and shooting without being in a spray boot and all stuff going on. And you're still breathing. You might get cancer up the road, but God got you through it. At least when you were young and king of Kong, you know, as a 17-year-old learning that train, you start doing all stuff, you know, you, nothing can kill you. You get to be about 55, you find out you got some kind of reaction to what you you around the asbestos or whatever. You know what I'm saying? But it's still God. It's still God to breathe all that stuff. Some people got jobs where it's horrible. I remember working for the, uh, what was it, Board of Education for the City of Detroit doing landscaping around schools way back in the day. One of many jobs. And we go around schools and, you know, do the, do the, do the dishes, do the bushes. <laughs> and all that stuff. And uh, anybody ever heard of Zug Island? Yep. <laughs> if you've never been to Zug Island, just in, in light of what I'm saying right now, just find out where Zug Island is and go get out of your car and hang out there for about 10 minutes. And there's people who live there, and you wonder how the heck can they be breathing? In fact, we get a school down here in Zug Island where all that craziness is going, all them factories, and it's bad here. People are living there in the middle of it. All of a sudden, man, we got to get this job done, get out of here. But somehow, even with all that contamination, God lets us still breathe. And that's just air that goes on and on and on. Think about how good God's been to you. You're still alive. You're not in hell. Amen. If you know Jesus, if you repented, you ought to be one thankful puppy. I mean, we should all be on the floor on our knees just bowing down the Lord, thanking him, thanking him, thanking Jesus. I mean, this thing's going to be a wrap one of these days. Time will go on so long as long as the Lord permits, but I'll tell you what. So if it says... Neither were they thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. 
You just like to be in darkness? Yes. I do. I remember. I do. I remember when the light comes on, it's a whole different world. The people are in darkness because a lot of it is just because they're unthankful. There's no thanksgiving coming out. There's some people going on there never thanking God. If it comes out, it's not real. They're forcing it. Ah, I just say it because I, I know I should say that. Thank you, Lord. Can you hear what's going on in my life, Adam? I don't know. Some people, I think, I think, think that misery loves company. But I don't know many people that like to hang around miserable people. Unless you're on a mission to set them free. But I'll tell you what, they can get on you. You get around miserable people, they'll make you miserable. You know, Mike has a real bone to pick sometimes because when we're worshiping God, some people don't worship God. Where's Mike? Happy birthday. Mike, you must not be listening. He'd be shouting amen now. <laughs> I tell Mike, Mike, what'd you do? Mike! Did you turn 81 today? No, 82. Oh, my heart. 83 tomorrow? Praise God. See, Mike, so he's single, never been married, just him and Jesus. A love affair with Jesus. It's been a little hard and lonely time, but he goes around thanking the Lord. He loves worship. He loves interceding. You know one thing that gets across him? When we're worshiping God, some people say, they, or they're doing something else. It drives Mike crazy. And sometimes Mike says, get up off your butt. Get up off your butt. <laughs> keep it real. You know what? I told him, keep doing it. Yeah. See, he knows how to get himself free. I do too, but I'll tell you what. A lot of people, if you're to be a disciple, you've got to learn this. That's right. If you don't step into worship and thanksgiving to Jesus, to the Father, the Spirit, to the Holy Spirit, if you don't get into a state of thanksgiving and worship, you're missing the whole reason and you'll never get free. You'll be the most miserable people in the church. You've got to make up your mind, I want to get free. I'm going to give God glory and praise. I'm going to thank God all of my days in Jesus' name. I'm no longer going to sit in the pew being an old, stuck-in-the-mud, old crazy person and don't get it and I'm thinking everybody else might be crazy because I don't have it. The only reason you don't have it because you refuse to say, Lord have mercy on me and I'm going to worship you when worship's on whether I feel it or not. If you don't do it, you'll never get it. You always be on the outside looking in. Because I'll tell you what, you can't get it until you forgive and release and let go of whatever it is and you just choose to start thanking God for how good he is. Just try it. In fact, forget that try it. Be a doer. Do it. <laughs> I'll tell you, I'll, I'll edit that out. Edit the trial. Do it. Do it in Jesus' name. Tell you, in the military, you become exactly what your upper echelon is telling you, whether you like it or whether you don't. You can pull over the covers at night and start crying for mom, but mom ain't going to get you. She might pay a visit if you get AWOL, but then you only be there for a day or two and get thrown in the brig. Now you're in real trouble. A lot of people are in the brig because they're running. They're running from the training God wants to give them. Amen. This isn't easy, but it's something you have to choose to do. If you're in God's military, you have to give it up. You have to surrender. Whatever the Holy Ghost is saying. Kenny gets up and says, hey, no music. Just praise God. Then. Prime the pump. Oh, I know about that. Pump's priming. You got to prime the pump. If you don't feel it, just start doing it. Doing it. And if your heart's right, you say, Lord, I want my heart pure before you. Where God, yes. and we're, thank you, Lord. Thank you. Get in. There should be a symphony of praise, a symphony of thanksgiving, a crescendo. It just flows through the place when everybody gets on the same page. One puts a thousand, two puts ten thousand. You get a whole group of people, even down in the hood, worshiping God, praising God, thanking God, worshiping Him from all their hearts. All kinds of things are about to happen. We won't have to pray for people. God will touch you where you're at. He'll restore sick bodies and bring back crazy minds and. Heal broken hearts and touch emotions. He didn't just show up and start manifesting himself. Why do you think the devil hates Thanksgiving? Why do you think the devil puts that on people and gets them bitter and mad? Because he knows this place and the, the kingdom of God will explode on the earth if people start giving thanks to God from their heart and forgiving others, letting things go. I'm telling you, it's a major thing that keeps the blessing of God from coming alive. If you don't learn to thank God, we can pray for you. All you want, you can hear all the Bible studies you want. It'll just become another intellectual discourse. Maybe you'll learn some intellect, but it won't get in your heart because your heart, your foolish heart is darkened. And the light needs to come up. 
The entrance of his word gives light. It gives understanding to the simple. So follow the word, the Holy Ghost, the rhema word. When it comes to you, you got to give it up. you got to learn to thank God. Open up your heart. Just close your eyes and thank him when the music's on and when somebody's leading or when you're just sitting there. Thank God. Thank God. Just start thanking God. So one more on that scripture and quickly a couple others. It's deep. Because when they knew God, they glorified him not as God. I don't care what God thinks. Neither were thankful. I don't care. What, what have I got to be thankful for? You know what? For anybody to say that, that's like treason against God. You really forgot what God's all about. Remember, it says when they knew God. These are people that knew God. And didn't remember as God. They got mad about something. They got bitter about something. They, they had an issue with somebody or something. They didn't let it go. And they became unthankful. And therefore they became vain in their imaginations. I remember doing a word in New Life probably in the 80s. Probably 84. Somewhere around there was called Vain Imaginations. V.I.s. A lot of people have V.I.s. Vain Imaginations. A vain imagination is something that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and takes you captive. But you need to ask God to release you in Jesus' name. And I'll tell you what, forgiveness is a key. If you're mad at somebody, somebody did something, let them go. You don't understand. No, I think we all got a, we all got some kind of deep story we could say. I, I, I got something, that, you know, in the natural, I could say, I'll never let it go. But you got to let it go. Remember who died for you? Jesus. He paid the price for our sins. He came to set the captives free. But our foolish heart gets darkened when we become unthankful. We become vain in our imaginations, and our foolish heart is dark. I'll tell you what, darkness is not good. Satan is the prince of darkness. You can be saved, filled with the Holy Ghost, and be filled with darkness. Just by the choices you make and the attitudes you display, and the things that come out of your mouth, and the things you choose to meditate on, you know, being saved is one thing, but acting on what the Holy Ghost is saying to you at any given moment is a whole other key. Whatever God says, do it. That's what Mary said to the servants at the wedding. Whatever he's saying to you, do it. She knew enough being Jesus' mama. Listen to the boss. Listen to my son. Whatever he says, do it. It may not sound good. Oh, yeah, go get some water. He's going to make wine. Yeah, right. Whatever he says, do it. I'm his mama. I know this guy. I brought him into the world. I remember the struggle when I birthed him. But he came out and, Mama! It was Jesus. Give God a hand for Jesus. He, I mean, if you just think about that, that alone and get obsessed with it. Seriously, it's the most incredible thing in the world. That God, that's a proof of his love. He loved us so much that he didn't let us all go to hell. He could have sent Adam and Eve to hell and said, forget him. But the second they did, he already knew what he was going to do, but he put in plan a motion for thousands of years to get his son here with perfect blood so he could be forgiven. There were five gentlemen, one sister come up here Thursday night. I was just glad I was here. The Holy Ghost was moving, and Jesus brought people to true repentance here and true born-again salvation. It was just a very extraordinary, beautiful time. One guy was 22 years old. He was sitting right over there. One sister was over there. And before the service, she said, I want to get my heart right with God. And so as the service went on, we got towards the, the time to pray. Right before we are going to pray, there was a young man here. I've never seen him before. He's 22 years old. I didn't know it then. And he raised his hand. And he'd been hearing the gospel, hearing the word of God. And he said this from us. He said, I want to give my heart to Jesus. So we had an altar call. Those two came up and three others joined me. I'll tell you what, it's one of the most beautiful. I've seen tons of salvation, but it's just one of the most beautiful. So sweet because God called them by the Holy Spirit and God literally changed them. And every one of their eyes were changed when they opened their eyes after they prayed. Because they prayed from their heart to give their heart to Jesus. They were truly born again. And they went back to their seats and a couple of them made comments. But the one young guy here, he said, you know, man, after he said, when I sat down, you know, I just felt different. He, he said, I looked over there. I don't know what he's talking about. He said, I looked over there. When I looked over there, he said, I realized something was missing. And I'm thinking, what's he going to say? And he goes, what was missing? He says, whatever was in me or on me, because I feel so complete now. He never got saved in his life. Never responded to Jesus. That's what we live for, folks. That's what we all should live for. 
It's about people coming to Jesus, experiencing salvation. Amen. So they responded, thank God. Their names are written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Yours can be too, if you've never done it. So that was one scripture. Two more quickly. And we're going to do something very special. This has already been special. Hallelujah. Remember, the devil thinks he's run the show tonight. He ain't run no show. He's defeated. He just forgets it sometimes. And we got to enforce Satan's defeat because that's one of the jobs of the church. So Romans and... Uh, let's see. Phones off, please. I'll read this one. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 18. It says, In everything give thanks. If you want to turn there. In everything give thanks. In everything, doesn't matter what it is, good, bad, ugly. In everything, give thanks for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. If you get that one scripture in you, it'll bring so much hope, so much deliverance, so much peace of mind, so much revelation. Because now the darkness in your heart will go, the true light will shine, all of a sudden revelation will come. The word of the Lord will come alive. You'll hear your brothers and sisters and you'll be able to pray and see results. Jesus came to set the captives yes. free. If you're not free, maybe this is the problem. Maybe you don't have the key of Thanksgiving yet. I don't believe that stuff. Well, as long as you act like that, you're just a stick, a stick in the mud in the noonday sun. In Arizona, where it's about 120 degrees in the sun in the summer. I've lived out there. It's hot. <laughs> that stick ain't moving. That stick ain't moving. When that mud kicks up, yeah. I'm in church and I can't move. Did you repent? Well, I don't know. I'm mad at God. Did you, did you ask God to forgive me? Uh, did you forgive that person? Uh, I don't want to. You don't know what they did to me. Well, you want to hear my stories? No, you don't. I got the real story to tell you. Just let it go. Hey, it's that easy. Let it go. Let it go in Jesus' name. Don't let the devil hold you down anymore. You're in prison. You're in prison. Walk out of prison tonight in Jesus' name. Take a hold of the word of God and say, no more devil. I'm shoving my Holy Ghost fist right down your throat. You ain't going to keep that peace and joy out of me. I'm going to get this tonight in Jesus' name. I'm not that lump on the log anymore. I'm not a no good, good for nothing, nothing that the devil's told. I'm a child of the Most High God, and I have a right to eat of the tree of life. Amen. The word of God. Amen. The word of the Lord was designed for all of us. Amen. But we all got to eat at his table. Amen. I don't know, man, but I hate seeing anybody coming here with a frown on their face and leaving the same way or worse. And it's only because they buck up and clam up when the word of the Lord's going on. They don't want God. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, them chicken wings are okay, but I can't eat them. They got too much nitrates in them from uh, whatever. So, and they're probably good for some of you, but not for me. I did not come from the chicken wings. You might, but I'll tell you what, that ain't enough to get you set free. You might put a little grease in your, in your veins too. <laughs> Dr. Kenny, how, how long can I eat these chicken wings and stay healthy? Every night? Oh, man, I don't want to tell you what I saw some guys drinking around it yesterday. It wasn't beer, it wasn't whiskey. Oh, man, why not? Mountain Dew, I'm going to tell it. Big jugs, two dollars and fifty cents a piece, and some of the guys here said, "I drink two of these a day." Come on, man! I'm Pastor Steve. I'm trying to help you. I'm serious. You you need to hear, man. We're discipling you. I'm telling you. I'm being honest. It blew my mind. A bunch of you guys. Really? Steve. Come back with packages, man. I'm just rebuking you with love, man. An open rebuke is better than secret love. I'm telling you, Mountain Dew, the big ones, two fifty a piece. And you drink two or three a day? Every day? Oh, man. Seriously. God, help us, man. I'm being honest, man. I'm being honest. That could be part of your problem. You're so whatevered out, whatever's in that stuff. That's, that's dangerous, man. I, I think it would possibly kill me. I, I really think so. If I drank those all kinds of, what, fecal lactics? What's that with me? You know, whatever. But, but it blow, I gotta say it. If somebody will check themselves, like, you know, maybe I need to slow my roll in the Mountain Dew. I'm not saying Mountain Dew's bad, but that much? 
That's my opinion. That's not in the Bible. Give God a hand. If, if I'm going to help you, you know, having your teeth sugar, I don't know why I grind my teeth in that. I get up, I'll cut my tongue, my teeth are worn down. What are you doing? I just take a lot of mom down. I don't know, Pastor. I'm trying to read the word, but I can't see it. Man. You better slow your roll, man. I'm trying to help you. And I ain't a health nut. I'll eat healthy, but I ain't a health nut. You know, where it's got to be this, got to be that. But chill a little taste, man. God have mercy, man. First Thessalonians 5, 20, 5, 18. In everything give thanks. This is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. One more, one last one. Second Corinthians chapter 4. I could spew out these scriptures, but I want to read them from the Bible. For those of you out here don't think we are in the Bible. Second Corinthians. Oh, Lord, help us. Amen. I'm sure some of you could grab the microphone and testify. Yeah. Oh, man. I can put a little... Yeah, I guess it's pretty good for your teeth, too, but I won't comment on that. I know what drugs did to me. You can't imagine all the work I've had on my teeth for 40 years. Seriously. I feel like I'm becoming a bionic man. <laughs> I mean, I've got a lot of parts that ain't really me, but they're functioning. <laughs> Whoa, man. I did a lot of drugs and a lot of stuff, man. I just poured it. I was not a get high weekend. Well, I stayed laid to the bone 24 7 for years. And that stuff's working on you. I mean, if you want to see a miracle, I'm still alive by the grace of God. It's only God. My body should be long gone. It's only the grace of God. I'd still breathe another breath, take another step. Had my heart beat another time. You better thank God that you're still alive. Amen, amen. 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Uh, verse 7. And the whole chapter is really good. You need to start at the beginning. I'll just come to verse 7. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels. That the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. We're troubled on every side. Yet we're not distressed. We're perplexed. But we're not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. Always buried about in the body, the dying of the Lord Jesus. Think about what he did for you. He suffered for us. Amen. Think about what he went through. None of us have ever suffered like him. Amen. That the life also of Jesus might be made manifest or obvious in our body. For we which live are always delivered to death for Jesus' sake, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest or obvious in our mortal flesh. And that includes a smile on your face. Hello? That includes a smile on your face. Coming from the heart because you're free. And Jesus has set you free. And you're thankful. You start thanking him all the time. Just It'll just bubble up. For we which live are always delivered to death for Jesus' sake, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our mortal flesh. So then death works in us, but life in you. We having the same spirit of faith, according as it is written, I believed and therefore, or because I believed, have I spoken. We also believe and therefore speak, knowing that he which raised up the Lord Jesus shall raise up us also by Jesus and shall present us with you. For all things, this is the, this is the verse I want to hit. For all things are for your sakes, that the abundant grace, listen, abundant grace, might through the thanksgiving of many redound, which means contribute to the glory of God. When you get a crescendo of thanksgiving and get everybody in that flow, God by the Holy Ghost gets everybody, to truly give them thanks, something happens. It contributes to the glory of God. God is pleased when we're from a heart thankful. That's why I said in everything, give thanks. Let all bitterness and anger and resentment be put away from you with all malice, which is desire to do ill will to one another. And be kind one to another, tenderhearted. Ephesians 4.32 says, forgiving one another. Even as God, for Christ's sake, has forgiven you. Let them go. Let them go. We all got stories, but you know what? Jesus came to set us free from our stories. And I think about those things. Now you're supposed to think about things that are lovely, pure, yeah. honest, a good yeah. report, be a virtue, be any praise. Think on these things. 
If you do that, the peace of God, the past, the understanding will guard your heart and your mind through Jesus Christ. What are you thinking about? How mad I am at the fruit salesman. I got home, there's only two apples in my bag, and I bought three. God chipped me, man. Or maybe that lady next to me was acting weird at the counter, stole one out of my bag when they stashed it. I don't know. I better go home. <laughs> I don't need to get any sleep yet. You know what I'm saying? People get mad. Let it go. People are getting crazier on the freeways. They're really getting crazy. You ever see them challenges and them beast cars? Man, I've seen a dozen of them at once flying down 100 some miles an hour, chasing one another. Is in and out of traffic. Man, they're getting crazy out there. I thought I was crazy back in the day, man. They're crazy out there. You better be filled with the Holy Ghost, believe in the divine protection, speak in the Word of God, trust in God that the angel Lord's encamped around about you and delivers you. Free from all accidents in Jesus' name. Amen. And don't get stupid out there. If somebody gets you, try, tries to get you tripped out, and honestly in me, it, it just rolls off me like water off a duck's back. And that's only because of the Word in me and the protection that that's given me. I honestly, and it's been years, but when you get in the Word for years, you become that. So you're not worried about anything. You know, where the devil would try to get you to hate him or flip him the bird of custom, I just roll it up. I say, God bless him, praise God. I keep going, honestly. Now, I know I'd look crazy, but it really sees how I act. And I'm not acting, oh, yeah. I just, I just keep going. But there's a lot of crazy people out here. They'll get under your skin real fast. They'll get you to the point where you don't even want to drive in the freeway anymore. You know, I'm telling you, there's all kinds. And it's going to get worse than the natural. You know why? Because people are really getting fully possessed with the devil everywhere. Yep, yep, yep. Politicians, governments, yep. all over the planet. This, this global economy out there, I could talk about that a lot. But everywhere I go, nobody has the help they need. Nobody. That's the truth. Some businesses are successful, but some are really swamped because other people aren't doing their job. That's the truth. A lot of pressure. And it's all designed to crash the economy. Let's yep. not be stupid. It's designed by the devil behind the scenes to crash the economy so we'll all become slaves to a socialist communist system, yeah. whatever. Order out of chaos. That's what's happening. I don't care if people think that's what I see. This is, not a, this is not a joke. But I'll tell you what, if our life is hid with Christ and God, the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but righteousness, peace, and joy, and the Holy Ghost. Nobody can take the kingdom of God out of you. But you can let it go. You can get mad. You get so caught up thinking about this, that, or the other that you're mad at the system, mad at the globalists and everything else. You know what? I just pray for them and keep going. I usually don't think That's about it. But when we got to talk about it and think about it, we got to talk about some things. He talked a little bit about what he saw. You need to know what's coming with the homosexual agenda. It's here. It's not coming. It's so big, I prophesied 40 years ago, 40-some with a dream. I'm not going to get it. That was going to be the biggest thing the body of Christ was going to face in the days ahead. Hello, here we are. That alone. And there's all kind of agendas, all kind of demon-possessed people out here. Yes. We can't let it stop us. Amen. we got to keep doing the will of God from the heart. Now with eye services, men pleasers. But what is God saying to you? And are you acting? Am I acting on it? Yeah. Let's do this thing. Let's go out in a blaze of glory. Yeah. Not with our tail between our legs. In Jesus' name. Amen to that. So, Here's what he says. For all things are for your sakes, that the abundant grace might through the thanksgiving of many contribute to the glory of God. And it goes on that it's real good because of time. I want to do this for a few minutes here. So, Kenny has you already started. Tell him to be thankful. Thank God for something. And that's what I was going to do. Open it up for people to come up here just real quick. Say something that you're thankful to God for. We're talking about pushing back the powers of hell. They think they're running the show on Halloween night, and we're saying, no, the kingdom of God rules in Jesus' name. God rules in his kingdom. Our lives are hid with Christ and God, but in the name of you, we're doing pushback tonight, and you push back by saying something in your heart that you are thankful to God for. Come on up here, young man, sitting back there. I'm not necessarily going to pick you up. Let's get some popcorn going here, like people popping. And just come take the mic. Say something quick that you are genuinely thankful for. And I'll tell you what, the devil hates this stuff. But God loves it. I'm thankful for God waking me up this morning. I'm thankful for you giving me a spiritual eye. I'm thankful for calling me out of darkness. I'm thankful for him talking to me personally. Lead me and guide me. I'm thankful for the spirit that gave me the willpower that I'm going to go for. You know, not being afraid. 
but being afraid of him that to do wrong to him. That's what I'm thinking. Well, thank God. Thank God. Amen. Who's next? Come on. Who's next? Come on. Right here, right here, right here, right here. All right. Short and sweet. Everybody. Praise the Lord. I'm thankful for salvation. I'm thankful for being free from heroin and crack for 25 years. Woo! Thank you, God, for killing me from hepatitis C. Yeah! That's what we're talking about. I'm just thankful I'm alive today. A lot of my friends are dead. I say 80% of them died. You're still alive. Sure, you come to church has something to do with that. Okay. Charlie Brown. That's my boy. Okay, look here. Uh, I, I think in the limit, a guy has to put me where the man come up to me and we can't hold me. He's an old elder. Boy, he's been called that. Man, I've never seen a man in my life. He's just close to you to stay on the ground that long. That's what the two and a half months. Now I have the card of the clinical director of Team Wellness Center. Jack Hall. 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 John Brown, when they put you out, I'm putting you back in. She's a white woman, young, and she's uh, got her up in that bed and kid. And also, I got the car, and this water right here, and wherever I went, got the car. Wherever I went for the last eight, nine, ten days, at least, I just got it. Well, God bless you. God bless you. Chris, you want to say something? Come on, I'll put the mic in your hand. You got a big heart, brother. You're a quiet guy, but you got a big heart. I see it in your heart. I thank God for tearing down the stronghold in this building again today. Satan keeps yes. racing back up. Thank you, Lord Jesus. And then God bless everybody. Thank you. Thank you. God's the winner, right? Who else? Come on. Yes. Uh, praise the Lord. Uh, praise Oh, no, I am not the one that does not that. Anymore. Not anymore. I want to say that I, the reason I sit back there so much is about three months ago, I was rear-ended in a car accident because somebody was in too big of a hurry. Two days before that, my daughter had her granddaughter. My first thought as they put, that, that, put me on that C-spine board was, am I going to hold my baby? Am I going to hold my grandbaby? Two things changed that day. One, you have to be humble before you can be anything else. All right? And second thing, uh, third thing, second thing, you better make sure you can forgive yourself before you try fighting to forgive everybody else. Okay? And the third thing, you will never see me without a helmet again. That is a that is a confirmed promise I made to myself. Mm -hmm. That's good. But I, like I said, you won't see me stand up a lot. It hurts to stand, literally. But I'm, I'm at Meyer. I'm doing my job. And like I told one person today, um, at about 6 o'clock in the morning, somebody was browbeating her about her weight. And she was on an amigo. And I said, you know what? You can't, you can't do that. You can't let anybody beat you down. If you don't love yourself, you ain't going to be able to love anybody That's else. Right. Right. And that is how I learned about life. Because when I was thinking I was on top, the devil come up behind me, and let me tell you what, he slapped me good. And if I had not, if I had not have been there that day, somebody would have died because the car that hit me at almost 50 miles an hour hit my toe hitch. And... It's a true story. He had to go see me. He had to put up with me. My daughter seen me in the hospital. Scariest, scariest phone call to ever get from your mama. Mom, honey, I've been hit. I've been in a wreck. Okay. So, you know, like I said, like Pastor Steve was saying, there are a lot of people on the road. You don't have to play into it. And for the love of God, I'm not against weed. But if you're going to smoke weed, please don't drive. Because there are people out there who don't do don't do weed, and I'm not against it. But the lady who hit me, she was high. So she had no control over herself or her vehicle. 
So if I hadn't have been there that day, somebody would have died. Because she hit him, she hit me hard enough to push my Jeep forward. So she would have pushed somebody's grandmother into oncoming traffic. So that's all I can say. Just just be grateful. Lord, we pray for her body too, in the name of Jesus. That you would cause this body to recover in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. By your grace and by your stripes, Jesus. Bring healing. I'll make it real short. I am thankful, very thankful. I've known this. He walked into the vigilante's clubhouse one night. Some guy goes, hey, man, there's that God dude. I've known God dude for 15 years. Hug me, man. Yeah, the vigilantes, he put out their sign and said, the vigilantes are my friends. I love all bikers, man. I love everybody. Yes, Jason, come on up here. Come on. While he's coming up, you know, I was at a graveyard yesterday, me and Elaine. We wanted to see our families, you know, visit where her mother and father and my son are, are buried. And uh, we got over there, and when we were in the place uh, paying, paying some money on some stuff we're buying, Plots, okay. Trying to be responsible, so when I go, the kids don't have to. Okay, I put it out there. Whatever. Is that good? That is good. Yeah. So anyway, that's why I was in there. So I was in there. I thought this other lady that I know. She was like a serious. I don't use this word casually, but she was like a real prophetess back in the day. Josie Winter. She was an old school serious sister in the Lord. She passed at fifty one years old to some complications. But anyway, she was a member of our church and awesome sister, led many people to the Lord. So I thought, I'm going to visit her grave too. So I asked where it was because it was in a place where I've seen it before, but anybody ever tried looking for graves and you don't know exactly where they are? Yeah. You can walk forever and not find them. Yeah. So I asked the person and they gave me the, the thing. So I, I, I went and did that last. Elaine waited, kind of walked up, it was wet out, and I just kept looking and kept looking, and I was following the directions, and it was still hard to find, but I found it. But guess what was right next to her grave? There was another grave that was open that was three quarters full of clay in there, right next to her. And I looked at that, and I go, man. See, I knew Josie. I knew her husband. Andy Wintering. I put his name out there. I thought, oh, I wonder if that's Andy, man. It's a fresh grave. I mean, they hadn't even totally filled it in. It had to be buried just a couple days before that. Well, sure enough, I went on Joe Wintering. He's a pastor in Marine City, good friend of mine. We helped raise him up. He's got his own church in Marine City. I went on his Facebook, and sure enough, a couple days ago, here he was preaching a funeral for his father. That was deep, man. Then I went to see her, and there was a guy I knew, man. I, we loved Andy. Jeremiah, you probably didn't know. Did you know he died? See, I didn't know it because I don't always see the Facebook stuff. But there it was, open, right when I was there. And it always reminds me how easy it is to die. That's right. You know, I did about four or five funerals in the last couple weeks. Wow. You know, looking at, you know, we're all in that number somewhere. But, you know, this is, this is a serious thing. So why don't we just forgive people, let stuff go, and start being filled with the joy of the Lord. Let Jesus... Heal all our pain. Hallelujah. Yes, Chase. Thank you, Pastor Steve. Um, I am now in, at, in April. I will be 13 years clean from drugs and alcohol. I will be in a few months, full, a full year of no suicide thoughts whatsoever. Um, which you all knew I really fought with a lot over Facebook because a lot of you did talk to me about, you know, not ending my life. And I don't know, Pastor Steve, did you see the pictures of my granddaughter on Facebook? No. They're absolutely beautiful. You can go see them yourself. I'm not going to show you, but they're posted all over Facebook. Um, yeah, most definitely. Most of them. And I, and I got, you know, this might tear me up. Um, it, it was uh, Friday when she was born. And um, what was funny was when I called my son, he was at the hospital. I got to hear my granddaughter cry. Oh, that's, yeah. that, that's beautiful. God bless you. Jason. Jason has come a mighty long way. And, and Jason, we're proud of you, peacemakers here, because you hung in through there through the thick and thin. 
Believe me, he, was, he wasn't that free when he came around. And it was a real touchy situation for years. A lot of emotional stuff and everything else. But, you know, you just stick with it, keep coming around, even if you don't understand. And the Holy Spirit will minister to you and other people will minister to you. Little here, little there. Like the Bible says, line upon line, precept upon precept. God's building Christ in you. And, you know, the more he is forming you, the freer you become. Let's get a couple more before we wrap this up. Who's there? Thank you, Pastor Steve. I want to thank God for the victory in Jesus today. And also the worship we had today. That was terrific. My band, this music in our hearts open up to God. And I want to thank you for what he's about to do that we can't see. Yeah, yeah. Right. You covered that, but we can't see, remember? Yeah. Has seen, is doing, and gonna do. Yes, yes. Who else, Mike? Anybody know Mike here? No. He's hiding with the mic. Should I get him? Oh, 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 oh. Praise God. You know, it doesn't, it doesn't matter what you're going through. You gotta be rejoiced and be That's thankful right. yeah. in all things. Right. And keep thanking him and praising him and, 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 and be joyful in it, in it, whatever you're going through. Because I know I, what I'm going through with my knee. And it's okay. The Lord touched the deal. It's okay now. Um, but we got to be thankful. we got to rejoice in all things. No matter what you're going through, you've got to be happy and rejoice and be thankful. Amen. And he'll bring you through it. Amen. It might take a little bit of time, but he will do it. Amen. He will back up his promises, what he says. Yes, in the name of Jesus. Amen. In the name of Jesus. That's good to hear. 82 years. Yes. He's 82. Good evening, everyone. Yeah, I want to be thankful for this, the land of the, the United States of America where we are free. Yeah. Glory to Jesus That's for all our soldiers and all our veterans and all those guys. And just thank them all for everything. But yeah. we want to thank Jesus Christ for everything. Amen. Yeah. Amen. We thank God for our vets. Love the vets. Vets, we thank God. Yeah. Man, if anybody's rolling over in the graves, it's everybody that's ever fought in the war and died. And yeah. The old school guys are still alive and fought. Believe me. This is a serious time. Don't take it lightly. There's a force of hell that are, you know, we're not worried about it, but we're aware. You need to be aware of these different things. You don't get caught up. However, just keep pushing through into the kingdom of God and doing what God tells you. That's all God wants us to do. Just learn to be obedient to the Holy Spirit. He'll do the rest. God will keep you safe. So let's get one more. Who's, who's that one that's not listening? Oh. Yes, so um, January would be seven years, no drugs, no alcohol, no, hey, it goes farther, I'm going to say it, no pornography, no sexual sin, all the, the cursing, the violence, gone. But, but the greatest miracle is starting to happen. I got a five-year-old, going to be five, little girl, and I, the reason that it's almost seven years is because seven years ago I put a Bible on my table, and I go to it daily, right. and I and I get in the Word, and I have my coffee, and mm -hmm. the Lord is changing me, and the Lord is keeping me. That's yeah. a miracle. Mm -hmm. But the greatest miracle is starting to happen now. I've got the little five-year-old mm -hmm. that's now come to come to Daddy's lap. Amen. My daughter's never seen me high, right. yes. and I know that my greatest ministry is my little girl and my other little girl, my wife. That is my calling. Yes, this is just extracurricular. That's my calling. Yes. That yes. ministry at home. And she's now coming to daddy like this morning and sitting on daddy's lap because she wants to read the Bible with daddy. Right. And this tough. morning, I said, honey, what did you learn? All day I kept asking her, every day, all day today, what did you learn, honey? She said, children, obey your parents and the Lord for this is right. She memorized the scripture. She memorized the scripture. I heard my little girl going around the house today singing praise and worship, my little girl. Listen. You might have threw your whole life away the way I tried to do, but we still have a ministry. Yes. Those loved ones are going to come back. Those loved ones are going to come around, and it's our job to influence them for Christ. Man, what an awesome, I mean, just what an awesome thing seeing that little girl be influenced for Christ. She never seen her daddy hide. She never seen that. God has kept me. And uh, so that is just, a, just, I mean, that's just, just so you know, that's my calling right now. God is calling me to be a minister to, to, to them. Right. 
and uh, she's praying. She's bringing her little Bible to church, man. It, 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 it's just amazing because yeah. this is a fight. Yes. This is a fight. And listen, yes. Daddy. Yes. Listen, Mama. No matter what you've done, how you made it, it's your responsibility yes. to step up right now. Yeah. If they're not in your life, call them back. Right. In the name of Jesus. Call them back. Say, God, bring them back. Yeah. Bring them back. And then when they come back, be that light and be that testimony. Do not give up on your kids. I don't care if you're 95. Yeah. Don't let them go. Don't let them just swallowed up in this world. Don't give up on your loved ones. Call them back. And then be ready when they come back and then be that influence that God has. Yes. He wants you to be the influence. Thank you, Lord. you step up, Mom and Daddy. Thank you, you step up, yeah. Grandma, Grandpa. Thank you, Lord. you step yeah. up, Sister. Yeah. You step up, Uncle. Yeah. You step yeah. up. Amen. The world's trying to kill your family. Yeah. You step up. Praise right God. Yeah, you know, and you, you got to be forceful by watching over your kids. Yeah. In this generation, more than any generation, and it's going to get worse. I'm telling you, if we don't really spend time with the kids and put the word of them, you know, you said Ephesians 6 one, because Jeremiah and our kids all came up when they were just starting to breathe on scriptures, and Ephesians 6 1 was one. Children, obey your parents and the Lord, for this is right, that it may be well with you and that you may live long near. Do you remember that one, Jeremiah? Remember Ephesians 6 1? Which other one did you get in you that was good? I mean, you got a lot of them in you. A lot. Yeah. I got tapes, cassette tapes of Jeremiah when he was three and four just speaking <laughs> scriptures. I got them. It's awesome. I mean, that's, I never throw that stuff away. CDs are better. I got cassette tapes. And I got, I always buy, if I see an old cassette tape thing about Salvation Army time, I would see if it worked. I worked because, you know, those things die out. Eight tracks in court. That's yeah, we're old still, brother. Brother, come up here for one minute. Let's close this down with you. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. There's one of the gentlemen that came up the other night. Come to think of it. I didn't even, I didn't even, I don't even, I think I saw you at the beginning of the service, but I forgot you were here until just now. Say something to us, bro. Thank God for still being alive. I've been through a lot of stuff. <laughs> Somebody had to tell me, said, you know you're 65? I said, what? Mm -hmm. I said, thank God. Mm -hmm. I'm still here. Yeah. Thank God. Amen. 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 He, he's been down them road behind the bars a long time. And he came up and gave his heart to Jesus last night. Give God a hand. And that's what it's all about. God will forgive you for anything, everything you've ever done. Don't let the devil lie to you. Yes, you know? Let's all stand up. Praise God. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let's grab hands. You ain't going to get no cooties. Not in this room. This room is sterilized. This room is sterilized. The Holy Ghost. No fear here. Fear not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed. I am thy God. Lord, we thank you right now for every precious person here. Every person, regardless of where they're at, Lord, we just pray right now that if nobody here, if anybody here does not know Jesus, we pray that you'd speak to their heart right now and let them know they do have need of Jesus, whether they think they do or not. Holy Spirit, you're the convincer. We're just the teller. But Lord, let them know right now they need you, Jesus, in their life. For real. They need to make a commitment to you, Jesus. They need to surrender their life to you so that they truly get born again. And they need to just say that prayer right now. Wherever that, Lord Jesus, forgive me of my sins. Come into my heart and save me. I need you. When you do that from your heart, he forgives you. But that's just the start. Don't give up. Come back. Get your Bible. We'll give you a Bible. We'll give you two Bibles, whatever. But God loves you and he wants to see you make it and do more than survive as we've heard. He wants you to thrive in him. But you got to give it up. You got to surrender for real. Draw nigh to God and he said he promised he will draw nigh to you. I heard there's one translation that says, drag yourself towards God and he will drag himself towards you. Same principle, draw nigh. 
And just think of being in prison for 15, 20 years, and you get a hold of that, and you're, you're in that prison cell, and you may never get it. And all of a sudden, that scripture comes alive. God shows you the word says, draw yourself close to God, and he'll draw himself. And you do that. You just consciously ask the Lord, and all of a sudden, the presence of God comes in, and you have peace that nobody could even believe. It floods you, even in the jungle, even doing the natural. I've seen it. God will bless you regardless of your circumstance. Whatever. He'll bless you. He'll make you the head, not the tail, above only, and not beneath. It's a reality, but you got to believe it. you got to act on it. you got to say it. you got to thank God, thank God, that you are forgiven. You are who he says you are. And then walk with it. Be a blessing to somebody else. Let somebody know what you've been angry against. Go up to them, even if it's tonight, or make a phone call and say, you know what? I just feel impressed to say, because I need to do it. I forgive you. I forgive you. I choose to let you go. And just do it. And watch what happens. The peace of God that passes all understanding will keep your heart and your mind. The confusion, the fear thoughts, the, the craziness will go in Jesus' name. Follow God and let him bless you. The Prince of Peace, Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord, for the food that we're about to eat. And the rest of the night, thank you for blessing us and being good to us. We love you, Jesus. There's nobody like you. Amen. Praise God. Take that. Give it away. Hey, girl. Hi. Thanks for that uh, blessing, that card and everything. You're welcome. I get them. Yeah, thanks very much. Thanks very much. Okay, I'm going to go.